Daily Tech News Show is made possible by you, the listeners. Thanks to all of you, including Paul Thiessen, Ali Sanjabi, our news patron, Machiavelli, and to Helen and Harriet, bon voyage on your big vacation. Have the best time. Send us pics. On this episode of DTNS, Windows Recall continues to baffle potential customers. Best Buy isn't continuing with Samsung's repair program. Why? Well, we'll tell you. And should the DOJ be investigating NVIDIA for antitrust violations? Justin Robert Young has thoughts. This is the Daily Tech News for Thursday, June 6th, 2024. From Studio Animal House, I'm Sarah Lane. From Columbus, Ohio, I'm Rob Dunwood. From deep in the heart of Texas, I'm Justin Robert Young. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. We have a jam-packed show for you today, so let's get into it, starting with the quick hits. After its shares rose more than 5% on Wednesday, NVIDIA became the second most valuable publicly traded company in the U.S. after Microsoft. NVIDIA hit a $3.019 trillion market cap, kicked Apple to the curb. Well, kicked Apple into third spot with $2.99 trillion. So, you know, they're neck and neck. But hey, NVIDIA is ahead of Apple at this point. NVIDIA shares have risen more than 24% since the company reported first quarter earnings back in May and have been on the up and up since last year in a big way. NVIDIA's artificial intelligence business has been the big driver for the company's rise, nearly 3,300% over the past five years. If you bought stock five years ago, congrats. Humane maker of the AI pin announced Wednesday that pin owners should immediately stop using their charging case that came with the AI pin because there are issues with a third-party battery cell that may pose a fire safety risk. The AI pin itself, the magnetic battery booster, and its charging pad are apparently not affected. Humane is offering two free months of the subscription service required to operate the AI pin as a result of the Vaulty charging case, but has not said if it will offer a replacement. Additionally, following a May rumor that Humane is now looking for a potential buyer of its AI pin business, a New York Times report suggests that HP and Humane may be in talks for up to a $1 billion acquisition of Humane's technology. The Canadian Radio, Television and Telecommunications Commission announced on Wednesday it will levy a 5% fee on all streaming services that generate $25 million per year in revenue. This fee applies to both video and music streaming services and has received opposition from, and this is no surprise, Amazon, Apple, Disney, Google, Netflix, Paramount, and Spotify. The fees are scheduled to take effect in September of this year in order to uh, support the Canadian broadcasting system and will provide an estimated $200 million per year in new funding. Google Maps is changing the way it handles location history for better security and privacy. Instead of backing up location data to the cloud, Google will start storing it locally on your device. In an email to users, Google says you have until December 1st to save all your travels to your mobile device before it starts deleting your old data and will attempt to move 90 days of travel history to the to the first device that connects to Google account if the new timeline settings have not yet been enabled. After December 1st, users will no longer be able to access their timeline from the web. That's actually a feature I, I like very much. So yeah, good to know. Good to know if this is a, if this is a service that you're using. Things are changing a little bit behind the scenes. Twitch announced a new program on Thursday that lets DJs stream millions of tracks in a new DJ category on the platform in an effort to avoid takedown notices from the DMCA. In return, DJs have to share a portion of their earnings with Twitch. The company hasn't made it clear what that number is, though, at least not yet. Twitch does say 15,000 DJs are now monetizing off their streams. Not all DJs do, but for those that do, it has partnered with major labels to bring a majority of popular artists to the program. Universal Music Group, Warner Music Group, Sony Music, and several independent labels represented by music licensing partner Merlin. All right, Rob, uh, people continue to not like Windows Recall. What's up? They do not. Uh, Microsoft's Windows Recall, a new AI, new AI tool designed to remember everything you do on Windows and part of the company's new Copilot Plus offering, is not being received well. CEO Satya Nadella first described Recall as a way that Windows can index everything you've ever done on your computer and let you then search for things you've seen using natural language. 
Yeah, so recall operates by taking and storing captures of your screen every few seconds to build a database that you as the user can later search with screenshots as visual aids. Another user could search it if you gave them permission, but it's kind of designed to be a personal tool. The database is stored locally on your device and never uploaded to the cloud. That's what Microsoft has been saying. Microsoft has also promised it can't see and it can't train any of its AI models on your data. So you don't have to worry about that. They won't sell your data to advertisers is also something that Microsoft has said. That all sounds pretty cut and dry. But as Tom explained on Monday's show, security expert Kevin Beaumont um, and and others, uh, but this is an example, found a way to upload his own recall database to a website that was then searchable by anybody with access to that website. The database is accessible from the app data folder if you're logged in as an admin, and then the data is stored in plain text in the database. This is obviously very problematic. This is not what Microsoft has promised folks. This is not necessarily something that Microsoft wanted to happen and was you know, nefariously doing in the background, but... Justin, uh, we we talk a lot about uh, you know trust, especially with with the big guns. Microsoft being uh, a, a very very valuable company <laughs> ahead of Nvidia, in fact. Uh, what 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 do you think? How did they f- like fumble this so badly? I don't know if they did fumble it. I, I, I do think that when we talk about features, you often try to do a trade-off between security versus what you can do with your machine. There has been a desire, uh, a consumer desire to say, I don't want to remember to go to my email on whether or not I saw this there or if I saw it on a website. If I can just ask my computer, where did I see where tickets were to go see the San Diego Chargers? Well, uh, this is in the past, I guess. Uh, so it would it would remember it all <laughs> way back then. Uh, uh, then. Then you should just be able to do that. The storage of that data is challenging. There have been startups that have offered to do exactly this. Now, those startups have folded, which might tell you what the consumer demand is. But this smells to me like a feature that was cooked up a few years ago, didn't account for the fact that the startup that started it didn't really do anything. And maybe this is better as an app that is voluntarily downloaded as opposed to an OS level feature. I think that an app would make a lot more sense because as big an issue for Microsoft as someone actually being able to do something with recall that Microsoft said that you wouldn't be able to do is the fact that a lot of consumers and a lot of companies uh, flat out just don't trust that Microsoft will do what Microsoft says it's going to do. So a big Mm -hmm. problem is that, you know, um, people and companies are concerned that if we turn this off, Will it always stay off? If I update, if there is a patch, is there there anything that I can do that will automatically turn this back on? People are really fearful and for good reason, because Microsoft has had issues in these areas of trust in the past on multiple occasions. They're fearful that this could get turned back on. And in the case of companies, some of them have rules that just say you cannot keep data for a certain amount of time. It's like it has to be purged. It has to be, you know, you have to get this up out of here after we've met certain, uh, you know, periods of time. And this just absolutely frightens them that, hey, Microsoft, you're putting something in the operating system that if I turn it off, I'm concerned that it can come back on. I'm concerned that someone can get access to that data. And that poses all kinds of problems for us in the way we run our business. And I think, and, and, th- uh, go ahead, Justin. Yeah, sorry. Th- this is the problem with a lot of these fractured ecosystems where the OS is created by different people then create the hardware. And you see this with Android and certainly Windows has been the original uh, uh, a version of this. It- it's not like Rob said, that this is Microsoft that is intending this to happen per se. It's also just a regular challenge because when different hardware comes along, you're putting it on different form factors. You have different forks of, of the OS uh, for, for different reasons. Sometimes things slip through the cracks. And when something that can slip through the cracks is everything you've ever done is uploaded to a plain text folder. Well, that means that the bounty is even bigger if you're a malicious actor. Yeah, and I, I I think Microsoft is in a funny spot because in many cases, not all, sometimes companies say they're going to do something one way and try to fool you and do something differently. But let's just say for the sake of argument that that is, was not at all what Microsoft ha- was going for here. Microsoft was not trying to trick anybody into showing the company their, you know, their daily life uh, every three seconds with screenshots. However... There is a loophole 
Um, you know, if it gets patched, great. Um, but, you know, are there other ways to get this information? I think it's less about someone saying Microsoft is evil and trying to destroy my life and more of for whatever reason, the security just doesn't doesn't feel rock solid. And when you're a company at that size that I mean, that this is not just Microsoft that I'm talking about. I don't even particularly use a lot of Microsoft products uh, on a daily basis. So. I don't. I don't have a huge issue with the company itself um, that I can point to any specific scenario recently. But uh, you know, there are other companies where I go, mm, yeah, I don't know about. The, no, I don't know about all that. And I think that eroding trust as a company, whether it is by design, well, you're not trying to erode trust by design, but you might be trying to steal data by design, which then erodes trust. But just not having your ducks in a row is uh, really detrimental. And we are seeing this with something, um, uh, the likes of recall, which when it was first announced, I, you know, I had some people saying, oh, this is the absolute worst privacy feature. I, how, how could they? And I was like, I don't know. I mean, it might be great. It might work well for your workflow. Yeah, In the theory, it didn't seem like it was a bad idea. But again, startups have raised a lot of money to do literally exactly this. I mean, if anything, this is a knockoff feature of stuff that we have seen pitched in the past, this totally. exact solution. Uh, the question is whether or not it, it it belongs as an OS feature and, and whether or not it belongs as baked in as it does. And that's the problem with the, the Windows team is you have a lot of people who want to do things that are, you know, wide ranging, but Unfortunately, they only have a hammer. Anything that they do is going to be felt on such a wide scale that they got to be judicious with. Right. So changing gears a little bit, uh, let's talk a little bit about Samsung. So just in the past few weeks, we've heard that iFixit and Samsung failed to renegotiate a contract and that the company's contracts with independent repair shops are Machiavellian at best and downright anti-customer, anti if not illegal in states where right to repair laws exist. Today we found out on the verge and a geek squad that excuse me we today we found out on the verge and uh, you know in a subreddit that geek squad uh, basically is saying that Best Buy is shutting down their Samsung repair program. Employees uh, have been told to prepare and they actually need to send parts back to Samsung because they're not going to be fixing phones in an authorized way for people just walking in off the street. So neither Samsung nor Best Buy are denying the winding down of the repair program. It's winding down. In a statement from Samsung's head of mobile customer care, Maria Renato de Castro, he said, Mario, rather, he said, we're in discussions with Best Buy to determine how Samsung can best support our customers moving forward. Okay, so <laughs> not not a lot to go on there, but you know, it looks like the partnership is, is winding down. Best Buy spokesperson Katie Clister said, we know how important it is to our customers that we're there for them with the right services and expertise for their technology. And we're currently working together with Samsung to evaluate the best way to support our mobile customers with authorized services and repairs. Okay. Knowing this, uh, we've got some kind of some PR mumbo jumbo going out here. Why do we think Samsung appears to be shying away from authorized repairs, if not flat out eliminating the opportunity for authorized repairs. Justin, what do you think? Does it make money? <laughs> There's no that's, money. That's, for that's, for yeah. Them. Yeah. Yeah. Like this was PR from the very, very beginning. They were hoping that they could make a little bit of something so they could appear like they were the nice guys as opposed to the big, mean Apple ecosystem that never lets you want to repair anything unless you bring it to their store. But at the end of the day, they're not going to do anything that doesn't make them money at the bottom line if it doesn't bring them enough goodwill that they can make up for it. And I don't think that it does that. So we are where we are. Yeah, I, I, I'd love to offer additional opinions, but you're probably right. It's probably the money that Samsung just can't make enough on creating these authorized parts for these places like Best Buy, like iFixit, like independent places that want to have an official Samsung part put in something. So they're just going to make it so difficult 
you know, with the contracts that, hey, these companies are not going to sign up and they're going to do what they were doing before we actually gave them the ability to do stuff in an authorized way. Um, I don't know that that is a, you know, it's 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 a bad thing for people who want to repair, you know, their 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 devices in an official way. But honestly, a lot of times if your device is beyond the, you know, like the, if it's beyond the warranty period, you're probably going to go for the 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 cheapest option anyway. If like if, if here's a screen that costs one hundred seventy nine dollars, here's one that costs one hundred thirty nine dollars. They're literally the same, except one says micro or says Samsung on it. The other one doesn't. And I think that that's where Microsoft or I, should, I keep saying Microsoft, but Samsung is saying that if we can't make money, then let's just not even do this. Let's just make it hard. And everybody, you know, all of our all, all of our vendors that are doing this, they'll just want to get out of the business. I mean, could Samsung figure out some sort of repair program with a smaller chain than Best Buy? Pay that chain less money for parts and keep people happy. I mean, for me, I, you know, I I know where my nearest Best Buy is. Um, I don't have a Samsung mobile device, so this doesn't really apply to me. But if I did, I know exactly where to go. And so to hear this news, I'd be like, oh, man, you know, that that was just the easiest way to do it. Um, it you know, it's 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 good. It's good. It's good mojo for a company the size of Samsung to have a program that it it at least on, you know, to the outsider feels like the company cares enough to keep going. Cause, cause yeah, otherwise, but, but this, you know, this, like where might, are people going to go? You know, we, we also know that Samsung and Best Buy do still have a tight relationship and that during Best Buy's recent earning calls, Samsung might put an official Samsung fix it location within Best Buy. So maybe this is just clearing out all contracts so they can figure out a more cost effective way that benefits Best Buy exclusively for people to bring in their phones. Yeah. Well, these days uh, we talk about AI quite a bit on the show. In fact, it's hard to get away from AI because AI news is always right around the corner. But if you want to keep up on what's really going on, weed out the bad stuff, listen to AI Name This Show. Each week, Tristan Jutra and Tasia Custody wade through the hype and the doom saying to keep you informed about the latest news in all things AI. Catch it at AINamedtheshow.com. The U.S. Department of Justice and U.S. Federal Trade Commission have announced a new deal where the DOJ will investigate NVIDIA for antitrust violations, and the FTC will look into possible anti-competitive behavior between OpenAI and Microsoft. Both agencies, as well as NVIDIA, have declined to comment. Microsoft has stated, we take our legal obligations to report transactions under the HSR Act, seriously and are confident that we have compiled those uh, or have com we have uh, you know complied with those obligations and i should just say the hsr act is the hart scott rodino antitrust improvements act of 1976 yeah j just to be clear this is a sources say situation so there, there is not an official announcement on this but we do know the general thrust, and that is that the DOJ and the FTC have been very, very uh, focused on uh, cracking down on various different antitrust stuff. Google has gotten it. Apple has gotten it. And now we are looking at something that is very interesting because this is an emerging market, although the players are obviously entrenched, Microsoft and NVIDIA. But AI is nowhere near what anybody would describe as to be a mature field, which is interesting that you would have an antitrust push for something this young. Although I do think that it echoes what we have seen over the last several years. And that is that the progressive wing of our politics has said that America let technology and specifically Silicon Valley companies go too long before they were regulated. And that if there were a just system, we would unwind mergers, including various different acquisitions by Google and Facebook specifically. So with the caveat that this is an election year, with the caveat that this is obviously a priority for a certain segment of the population, I do think that it is looked at as an appropriate action by those who focus on the FTC and the DOJ as being possibly too complacent in the past. Well, okay. So if if 
if if the DOJ is going to scrutinize a company like NVIDIA, I mean, what what are your initial thoughts on and how that will go? Well, they're they're going to look at how much uh, uh, Microsoft invested in OpenAI. They're going to look at how much uh, uh, NVIDIA has been part of everything and whether or not they hold a uh, monopolistic or controlling element of that field and if they are discouraging other players from getting into it. Again, what's challenging about this is that we don't have a set example of that very clearly being in place. And that's the challenge that we've seen in a lot of these other FTC uh, uh, inquiries, if not lawsuits, is that it really depends on how you define what the marketplace is. Because if you are not dominating a marketplace and denying consumers an actual advantage, then it's, it's hard to prove. And right now, you know, there's a lot of money being spent on AI right. while there's a lot of money coming in for some players. It, it's not, we're not in a situation like what AdWords was or what uh, Facebook advertising was. Those were for real, you know, geese that laid the golden eggs. Right now we are looking at the possibility that there could be a tremendous dominant perspective in AI, but it, it's hard to say exactly what it is right now. Yeah, I mean, besides the companies involved uh, in this scrutiny being just really big companies with lots of money, yeah, you know, I it, I don't know how you prove antitrust because we're in such early days. I mean, maybe you can, but it seems more like company has too much money. You know, let's get let's get this party started first uh, instead of you know coming after them later. Yeah, the, the the question is, are there too few players involved in AI? I personally believe that we don't know enough about what the AI market is going to be to even begin to answer that question. But then again, if you are somebody who believes that the government should have stepped in to stop Microsoft from buying Instagram, for example, something that was cited with by Elizabeth Warren in her 2020 campaign, then now is the time that you should start asking questions about Microsoft's uh, investment into open AI. To, to that point, um, you know, is this a thing of these companies? They aren't as big as they're going to be, but because we see where things are going, we want to just get in front of it right now. Um, I, I'm thinking about NVIDIA specifically, you know, five years ago, NVIDIA was a fortune 2000 company, fortune 2500 company. Today it's a fortune two company. So, <laughs> Um, you know, in five years. So they maybe maybe maybe, maybe 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 three after WWDC. We'll we'll we'll, we'll see <laughs> maybe, where it maybe goes. Three. Yeah. So so and, and then the other question is that you know this particular story is about the DOJ and the FTC launching investigations and doing stuff. But are we seeing this happen in other places around the world? It seems like that a lot of governments are concerned about these companies and just how big they're getting and just what ultimately they're going to be able to do with all the data that they're collecting. Sure. But if we had laws that restricted that, then maybe it would be a different story. What we are looking at right now are anti-competitive, anti-market practices. That's what these organizations are there to guard against. I don't know how much you can prove that there was a dominance in a certain market when the market is this young. Mm -hmm. You know, we have, we have seen Google put a lot of time, effort and money into building up their own LLM uh, world with an API that they want to very aggressively market. Is it the fault of open AI and Microsoft that that has not been, uh, uh, taken up as fast as Google would have liked? Maybe. Or is it Google's fault? Or is it just timing? That Google has just not done a good enough job of creating a product that people want to integrate. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, right being now, first to yeah. market is not antitrust in itself. No, 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 no. Now, the other side of this is we're literally talking about the top two companies in the world. So if we're saying that we need to step into and talk about the relationship between uh, Microsoft's relationship with AI and NVIDIA's relationship with AI, it's not like we're talking about two random companies. We're literally talking about the two biggest in America. So 
maybe a a, a heavy hand early is a different story when you're talking about something like that. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, um, I, I think so much of this again, early days, not to say, you know, and going back to our, our conversation about recall and, and Microsoft earlier, not to say that Microsoft doesn't have horrible intentions for everyone, but let's just <laughs> assume that the companies don't have horrible intentions for everyone. It does feel like, yes, the race to be first um, is 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 going on. Uh, Google is not first right now, and uh, Google's uh, and neither is Apple. Um, we'll see how things go at WWDC next week. But um, but the, the the there are lots of companies working on AI. Um, are those companies going to be able to compete with huge huge companies, the likes of Microsoft and Nvidia? Probably not. Um, but again, I, you know, we're, we're, we're still, you know, I still sort of sit here and go, huh, so what can AI do for me today? I'm not sure. I kind of have a workflow already. Um, and, you know, I, I, a lot of us are kind of scratching our heads about that. Well, and, and, and I, I do think that a lot of those solutions are coming. The question is on what APIs are they going to be built on? The argument that I would say against the concept of open AI being the dominant player in that field is while I do believe that they are the best in class in terms of AI, they're not the best in class for every single thing that you can do with AI. There's a lot of models that are smaller, faster, and cheaper. And for things that do not require the absolute best in the world, those are always going to be preferable solutions. The concept of, 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 of AI API development is moving really, 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 really fast. And so the, the way that you would sneer at this kind of attention is to say, well, did the FTC come down on Friendster because they saw the, 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 the potential of social media advertising? No, that would have been a mistake. Friendster wound up not being the player that was able to take advantage of it, even though Google and Facebook eventually did. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in a way, it reminds me a little bit of just... I don't know, like photography apps uh, that I, of which I still have many on my phone and I never use anymore because everything's built into the phone. But, you know, like a photography app that does a couple things really well is the w reason that I use that app. Now, I, I'm using photography just as an example. You could use it for lots of reasons. But I feel like the AI landscape going forward, not every company is going to be like open AI level anything. And that's not necessarily the point either. The point is, how does this help people uh, with workflows that they're, you know, so they don't have to like, completely start over a workflow from scratch. And to be able to do a couple things really well, can mean that AI company is very successful. You don't have to do the, you know, Oh, it's your Scarlett Johansson, you know, pocket friend who's with you and just, you know, don't say that. Don't say that. She'll helps send your life every day. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think, Justin, you kind of hit it on the head. It's it, the industry is not mature enough for anybody to have monopolized it yet. But there are some really, really big companies like the biggest and the second biggest until maybe next week that are big players in this and it looks like the you know the ftc the doj they just want to make sure that potentially they don't become monopolies in this space because once they do it's hard for anyone else to really do anything and get a foothold in anything that they would do i i, I would say that this is a little bit more volatile than i think people might think but we'll see well, we will see. And thank you to you, Justin Robert Young, for bringing the knowledge and keeping us on our toes. Let folks know where they can keep up with everything else you're up to lately. I don't know if you've heard, friends, but politics is in the air. There's a mm. lot going on, not only in Manhattan courtrooms, but also on vice presidential shortlists and everything in between. You can find it on the Politics, Politics, Politics program. Find it wherever you get your podcast and on youtube now youtube.com slash at politics 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 excellent patrons stick around for the extended show good day internet you thought we were done with ai we're not done with ai but 
We're going to talk about AI in music. Kind of a thing now, and the latest offering from Stability AI might be of interest to you. You can also catch the show live Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 2000 UTC. Find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com forward slash live. We'll be back tomorrow talking about Samsung's lawsuit against Aura with their Galaxy Ring debut with Ron Richards. The DTNS family of podcasts. Helping each other understand. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>